Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, aka Stitcherista here on YouTube, and today is Wednesday, April 3rd. I thought I would come on here and do a, a whip and chat for you guys. I'm actually going to be stitching in this one. It has been a minute since I have done a stitch with me. Now I am doing a voiceover because it's just easier to do that. So what you were seeing is Mirabilia's or Norik. I'm pretty sure it's Mirabilia. It's Nora Corbett. Lavender Mist. So go back to yesterday. I had off yesterday and I did a bunch of stuff in the morning like around here and work stuff. And I had planned on doing a video yesterday also because on the days that I have off or a job ends early, I try to do a video because I try to do a video. Yeah. But yesterday it just wasn't happening. And we have had some really rainy weather here the last couple of days. Like it has rained every day since Sunday. And I remembered I had a gift certificate from the stitching post, which is my local needle workshop. It's about 25 minutes from my house. And he had given me a $30 gift certificate and you had to use it in a year. So I knew I only had until like November when he bought it. So I said, you know what? I know I was going to start Petal Fairy from 123 Stitch, but I don't know when those supplies are coming. They did ship, but I don't know when they're going to be here. And I said, you know what? I wanted to start something now. I can do Petal Fairy after I do Lavender Mist. So... I said, I'm going to go to the stitching post and I'm going to see what Mirabilia they have and I'm just going to pick one and I'm going to get the beads and fabric there. Well, they don't have actually very many Nora Corbett or Mirabilia. They have the newer ones. I don't know how old Lavender Mist is, but they only had like five different ones. That's it. So I almost got the one she looks like a bee queen. I almost, I picked that one up and I'm like, man, that looks really big. So not that I'm intimidated by that, but I said, you know what? I really like the colors in Lavender Mist. It's a woman. She's really pretty. And so I said, okay, I'll get this one. So the beads were right next to where the Mirabilia patterns were and Nora Corbett patterns. I have been away from stitching Mirabilia's and Nora Corbett's for so long. I did not realize that there are now bead numbers that are in the 40,000, 60,000, 70,000. Okay, so I'm looking. They did not have two of the bead colors. So I said, okay. And I didn't want to get uh, Krynik there. I like using Rainbow Gallery Petite Braid, Petite Treasure Braid. So I said, okay. And I have a bunch of the Petite Treasure Braid already. So I'm like, well, maybe I have the color that it calls for. So I can't, I did find fabric. Now the fabric I'm stitching on is called sugar, sugar cane, sugar coat, sugar something. And I don't remember. I want to say it's fiber on a whim. I don't even remember because I picked it up and it had a tag on it and I didn't really glance at it. And then they had to like tag it for me and price it. So it's really soft. It reminds me of, picture this plus Ada, but I don't think it is. I, I want to say it's fiber on a whim, but I may be wrong. It's very pretty though. And I have started the pattern right in the center. And I'm going to do the lower part first and then go up and do the top part of it. So I wasn't planning on taking this to the retreat next week, but I'm going to. I have a table clamp that is a grip it table clamp that will hold like Q snaps and stuff. I am hoping that the, it will hold this scroll rod. If it doesn't, I'm going to pull it off the scroll rods and put it in a Q snap and take that with me because I know that it will hold a Q snap. So we'll see. I need to finagle with it and fool with it and see if it'll hold it. So I'll be able to bring my halo glow lamp that I have that. I got from my dad and stepmom for Christmas, but I, so yesterday when I came home, I said, okay, I am going to pull out 
my stitch mate. My Holy Grail stand, my favorite stand of all time is my stitch mate. I owned one of these back in 2003, two, 2002, when I moved into my first apartment, when I was divorcing my first husband. And the stand was, it's, they, at that time, they made them as you ordered them. So it took a couple months to get it. It was $400. My rent was $485. And I know I told you guys that before. So I had to save for this. It, it was, it's the most beautiful piece of furniture as far as for stitching that I've ever had. So I used that stand for a long time, for probably 10 years. And I don't know, got some hair at my ass or something and was like, so I sold it and then regretted it. And then by that time, the guy that made them passed away. So they weren't being made anymore. So if you were finding one, it was by somebody that already owned it. And I think I had put something in one of my videos that I was looking for one. And someone who used to attend the retreat at Salty Yarns in Ocean City in May, she wanted to sell hers. And I bought it. And Bill's like, you are never getting rid of this. It's some, if something breaks or goes screwing on it, I'll fix it. So I love it. I love it so much because you can push it out of your way. The scroll rod, as you will see, if I finish off a thread in, while I'm doing this video, you can turn it all the way around. It's fantastic. Now, when I pulled it out yesterday, you can have it on the left side of you or on the right side. Initially, I wanted to put it on the left side. But when I did that, I couldn't pull the scroll rod in front of me close enough. So I'm like, all right, I have more room the way my office is set up on the right side of my recliner. So I said, all right, I'm going to have to rearrange some things. So it was getting close to the time that Bill was coming home. And so I get it on the other side and I have a magnetic board for the key, for the floss key that I have like a little holder. It, it screws in there and it'll hold it. And then I have something where I clamp my stitching lamp on. So those things I had to move around because... They weren't working when I flipped it to the other side, when I had it on my right side. So in order to flip those around, I had to take apart the stand and flip this block around. Well, when I did that, then I couldn't remember how it went back together. Have you ever done that? <laughs> so here I am with all these pieces on my lap and I'm frustrated and Bill comes in and he's like, do you need help? Yes, yes, I do. So he helped me, we figured it out and I got it all situated. And I actually did a little bit of stitching yesterday. I did have the pattern on my magnetic board, but I actually like to have the pattern on the fabric where it's closer to my face. And I am one of those people, I mark up the original pattern. Yes, I don't make a copy. I don't do any of that. I mark up the original pattern and I highlight it. And I've never had an issue. I have stitched many, many mirabilias and lavender and lace patterns. I've never had an issue. So that is where I'm at with that. And I enjoyed it very much yesterday. Now, this piece will take me months to do. A normal big mirabilia, if I work on it every single day, like I did when I was single, um, it took me three to four months to finish one. So there is no doubt that this is going to take me a minute to finish for sure. But I should be able to get a good chunk done at the retreat. You know, I'm going to have Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now we do a lot of talking and socializing, but um, we do do some stitching. So, and I was like, okay, what am I going to use to hold all of the bobbins and the beads? Because it has, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It has 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. It has 38 colors in it. So I had all of my bobbins that I have for my DMC variegated thread, the color variations. 
I had them in this really pretty floss box that I bought at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. And I said, all right, when I ordered the stuff for Petal Fairy, I ordered just a clear bobbin box. And what I was going to do was pull all of those bobbins out of the fancy box, put them in the clear box, and use the fancy box for my, for my Mirabilia project. So that's what I did. I got a big Ziploc bag, put all those bobbins in there, and then just put all of my bobbins and beads. And there's like a bigger slot where I'm able to put my scissors and needles in. So I will have to bring my Vera Bradley stitching bag because I'll have to fit the scroll rod, my table clamp, the floss box, and my daylight lamp, my stitching lamp. So that's going to be a heavy bag. But I should just have that bag and my suitcase. So, but yeah, and I realized too that the first day that I'm going to be there, it's Lacey's birthday. So I have a little present for her and I'm going to... um ask her if if I can treat her to dinner that night. Like I'd like to pay for her dinner when we all go out. So love Lacey so much. And um, I think she is turning 70. She doesn't look 70. I'm pretty sure she's turning 70 though. But yeah, I, I haven't seen anybody since December at the retreat. So I'm I'm so much looking forward to it. But yeah, so that's where I'm at with stitching. And I've also become so okay, coloring. I have to put that on the back burner for now because I kind of hurt my arm because I was doing it so much. And when you use colored pencils and you're really trying to blend them, you have to press really hard. So I got to give that a rest unless I do like some marker coloring. But what I have become interested in is dot painting. Have you guys heard of it or have you guys done it? So people usually do mandalas. You use like a stylus, a craft stylus, and you just get acrylic paint and you dip it in the paint and you do dots. Now, there are different ways to do it and I want to do it in coloring books. So I don't know how acrylic paint is really going to hold up on a coloring book page. So I've done some research. I watched a couple videos. There actually are books out there for dot painting, but you would use, I guess, marker. So I put a couple of those on my wish list, but what I did do was I ordered a small set of acrylic paints. Um, I wanna say they are apple barrel paints. Now I could go to Michael's and buy some paints, but I wanted a set of like 16 colors, something like that, so I have a variety. And then I was like, all right, well, how am I gonna store these paints? Because I'm the kind of person, like my craft area is very nice and neat, as you guys have seen my craft room. I need to have somewhere to store these paints where I have easy access to them. So again, on Amazon, I did some searching around. They have a zippered like little, it looks like a caboodles thing almost, you know, for your makeup, but it holds bottles of acrylic paint. I bought that too. <laughs> so those are coming tomorrow morning and I am looking for, I already have the styluses because I've had the styluses from when I did uh, crafting and stuff long time ago. Now, there are styluses that are made for dot painting. So I there was a set on Amazon that I saw, but I put that on my wish list. So my birthday is coming up next month. And if Bill wants some ideas, I told him not to buy me anything because we are spending money on a trip for him and I to go on. But um, he may get me a little something, who knows. So I put all of that on my wish list. And, you know, I'll even ask my mom, I guess, for like an Amazon gift card, and then I could just buy that stuff. So I will keep you posted on that because I am I have two mandala books and I'm going to try it in the book. I mean, if I ruin the page, I'll just rip it out and throw it away. We're going to see because I'm very excited to try it and to do with paint. I mean, back in the day, before I even cross-stitched, I used to paint plaster craft and I would sell it at craft shows. I loved doing that so much. So I've always been crafty of some sort since I was a teenager. Um, love paint, love color, love all that stuff. But yeah, let me know if you guys have ever done any dot painting and if you like it. 
It looks really fun. I even joined a Facebook group for it to see what people do. They do amazing things. Amazing. Okay. So I thought that I would read a couple stories out of Chicken Soup for the Diet or Soul because I had to re- uh, renew the book at the library. So I've had the book for three weeks. And the book, I'm only on page 30. And there's 243 pages. So, okay. So this story is called, I mean, I'm putting my recliner out. This story is called Take Two. So the quote at the front is from John Quincy Adams, and it says, Patience and perseverance have a magical effect before which difficulties disappear and obstacles vanish. Patience is something that I am always working on with myself because I don't have a lot of it. But when you're losing weight or changing the way that you do things in your life, persistence, consistency, perseverance, for sure, factor all into it. Okay, there is something about everyone they're not happy with. Maybe it's their weight, hair, eyes, or skin color, their shoe size, job situation, or relationships, any number of things. And like I said, we all struggle. We're all struggling with something and battling something at any point point in time, right? For me, it's always been my weight. When I hit puberty, I sprouted a chest, a butt, and a little gut all at once. I became aware of things I never had before in places I never thought of before. I became increasingly self-conscious. Some girls chose not to eat. I chose the opposite and began eating too much. My appetite skyrocketed, but I looked fine until I hit 18. Then it was as if gravity had something against me at an early age. I was making bad eating decisions, was depressed, and cared way too much about what people thought of me. Eventually, my weight became an obstacle in the way of happiness, or so I thought. It took many years of these bad eating habits for me to end up considerably overweight. I would diet, crash diet, nosedive diet. If there was a diet out there, I was on it. I tried about everything but eating tofu with tweezers. Don't think I didn't consider it, though. And I would lose weight only to gain it right back and then some. A constant frustration for me was the emphasis that society placed on being thin. Thin is beautiful. To those of us who aren't, we must resolve to lose weight and be healthy and live happily ever after. That moment of fortitude vanishes the minute the delivery boy holding the extra large pepperoni pizza with extra cheese rings the doorbell, and you think, well, I paid for it, I might as well eat it, which is exactly what I would do. Then I would feel terrible about my lack of self-control and cry. Okay, before I go on, I wanted, I told Bill this yesterday, and I said, you know what, I think I'm really going to do, and I think I might have said this, when I go to the retreat next week, I will get coffee in the morning and probably one in the afternoon because I always do that, but I am going to try to do OMAD, which is one meal a day, and I'm going to try to only eat dinner. I'm going to bring some microwave popcorn, the mini bags that I have. I found a skinny pop that's really low in calories to maybe have something at night when I'm in the room, and I might put a couple of Luna bars in my purse, but I I can go that long. I've done it, and if I drink coffee and I'm talking and chatting, it's not going to be a big deal, so that's what my goal is. That way I don't have to... Pack a bunch of food and bring a bunch of stuff. Don't have to do it. Okay. Of course, I comforted myself with a double dark chocolate candy bar or two or three, which worked until I read the nutrition label. Imagine my shock to discover my delusion about chocolate being a vegetable. Hey, it comes from a bean and beans are vegetables, aren't they? The justification and rationalizations never end. On a day I resolved to lose weight and be healthy, I would consume over 4,000 calories. I know I was in the junk food line a little too long when they handed out those metabolisms, but even the women who pack it away and stay tiny wouldn't last long at that rate. I was living in an endless cycle of guilt, unhappiness, and failure. I would make jokes about myself so I'd feel less self-conscious about the way I looked. I would tell people I should put stickers on my holster hips that say caution, wide turns. Or how about this one? I get applause when I run in gym class. My thighs slap together so loud it sounds like everyone's clapping. After all, my attitude is based on 10% of what life hands me and 90% of how I react to what life hands me. 
It didn't occur to me until later that like almost everything in life, happiness is a choice. I made some bad choices in the food I ate and how much of it. Now I have to reverse the process. In the end, it isn't about crash diets or what society thinks. It's about learning to have a diet. Everything we eat is a diet. And most people don't realize that. Yeah, whatever your diet is, it's what you're eating. And one secret is to keep things in proportion. Another is choosing to be happy with what you have, no matter how much more of it you've been given. God, my husband, and the prayers of many family and friends are the reason I'm able to put life into a different perspective today. Society doesn't define happiness, especially mine. I no longer let it. What we do with our lives and bodies is up to us. I had to change my attitude before I could change my eating habits. There are certain things about myself that I can't change, but the things I can, I am learning to be less obsessive about and more patient with. I'm still in a weight loss process and will be for a long time, but now when I answer that door and find an extra large pepperoni pizza with extra cheese waiting, I'll have two slices instead of four and choose to be happy that I had any at all. And that story was by Karen Bakazi. Yeah, you know, we are our own worst enemy as far as like weight loss and things like that. We are our own worst critic, right? And um, yeah, we have to give ourselves some grace and some patience and give ourselves a break. Now, that's not an excuse to just go hog wild crazy and eat all the junk food, but give yourself some grace if you do eat some, right? Okay, so the next thing is actually a recipe reprinted from the Swartz Bean Principle Cookbook, and it's called Poached Eggs All Gratin. Makes two servings, 19 grams of protein, trace carbohydrate. One tablespoon white vinegar, four eggs, two tablespoons grated Parmesan cheese, two tablespoons chopped fresh parsley. That actually sounds really good. In a deep medium skillet, bring two inches of water and vinegar to a boil over high heat. Reduce heat to simmer. Crack an egg into a small bowl and tip gently into boiling water. Repeat with all the eggs. Cover skillet and cook three minutes for soft yolks, five minutes for firmer yolks. Using a slotted spoon, remove eggs from water and drain thoroughly. Sprinkle with grated Parmesan cheese and fresh parsley. Serve immediately. I would love to try that. I love eggs and I'm always looking for a different way to cook them. Okay, and then one more story. This one is called You Choose, You Lose. So the... Quote at the beginning is what by William Jennings Bryan, and it says, Destiny is not a matter of chance, it is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for, it is a thing to be achieved. I've had it. I'm sick and tired of saying I can't have something. I complain to my best friend Linda. I can't have chocolate cake. I can't have ice cream. I can't have a yummy eclair. Is there anything I can have? You can have lots of things, she said. Yeah, right. You're not the one trying to lose weight. The whole world is filled with things that are off limits. I sulked in my chair as I read the lunch menu in the restaurant. Pastrami on rye, cheeseburger, tuna melt, roast beef au jus, french fries, onion rings, cheesy broccoli soup, New England clam chowder, double fudge brownies, blueberry cheesecake. The choices were endless. As a teenager, I could eat anything I wanted and as much as I wanted, not anymore. Now I step on the scale every morning and peek at the numbers, hoping they haven't gone higher than the day before. I'm happy if I haven't gained and elated if I've lost even half a pound. It's a daily struggle and I'm tired of fighting. I'm even more tired of that word, can't. There are so many things in life I just can't control. How tall I am. I always wanted to be short like my sister. Really, I wish I was a little bit taller. My boss, I wish he would save the big projects for Monday instead of Friday afternoons. The high cost of living, I wonder if I'll ever be able to retire. I have no power over so many areas of my life. Is there something I could take control of? Then the light bulb went off in my head, one of those aha moments when it all comes together. There was something I could control, my own mind and my own decisions. I did have a choice in this one area, the area of what I chose to eat. I could pick something I knew would be good for me or I could pick something that wasn't in line with my goals. 
It was all a matter of choice, and it was all up to me. Linda's voice brought me out of my thoughts. How about the BLT? Or is that something you can't have? You know what? Starting right now, right this minute, I'm not going to say can't anymore. I sat up straight in my chair. I'm going to say what I choose to have instead. Sounds like a good plan to me, Linda said. So what are you having? I'm choosing the Chinese chicken salad and I'm asking for the dressing on the side. Sounds terrific, but you can't have a soda with that, right? She said, oops, I said can't, I'm sorry. That's okay. It will take a while to get used to it, but to answer you, I'm choosing ice water with a slice of lemon today. I felt great when I came out of the restaurant after lunch. Not only did I not feel bloated from eating too much, but the salad filled me up just fine. And most of all, I felt more in control of my mind and of my eating habits. It was something I could choose. And I love the feeling of power I have in that. And that story was by B.J. Taylor. So yeah, you know, it, it, is just a, it is a different mindset. Instead of thinking you're deprived, you have to think, I am choosing what's good for me and good for my body, right? Yeah, it, it definitely is a mind shift that you need to have. But So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me stitch on this Mirabilia. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.